In this video, you will learn how to implement the GenVid SDK streaming solution in your Unity project. We'll look first at how to import and run the provided sample, how to stream video and audio from Unity, and how your Unity game can interact with GenVid services. The GenVid SDK is compatible with Unity 5.6 or later. In order to run the GenVid tank sample, you'll need to make sure you have Unity 2018.4 installed. Launch the Unity Hub and create a new empty project by clicking the New button. When prompted, create the new project in the path shown on screen. If you'd like to put it somewhere else, make a note of the path because you'll need it later. Now that you've created the project, you need to import the GenVid Tanks Unity package. You can download and import the package from the Unity Asset Store, found under Window, Asset Store. In the Asset Store search field, search for GenVid Tanks to locate the package. Follow the instructions to download and import it into your project. The GenVid Tank sample uses Unity's Tanks tutorial project as its base. All of the GenVid specific assets are in the folder Tanks Content Modified. Move the Plugins folder from Assets forward slash GenVid Tanks to a directory above but under the Assets directory. Now go to Window, GenVid to open up the GenVid window. This window gives you a summary overview of all the general dependencies that you have installed and what projects you have opened. In addition, if you have a working cluster running on your machine, this window will also provide you with an overview and control of the cluster, its settings and current jobs, to complement the cluster UI, which you can also open from here. Navigate to Assets, GenVid Tanks, GenVid Tank Scene, and double-click that file to open the scene. GenVid services and scripts are all packaged under the GenVid Session Manager, including video and audio streaming and stream command integration with the game client. Uncheck the GenVid Session Manager's Activate SDK field to play your game in the editor without the GenVid services. Check this field again when you want to test with the GenVid services after you finish configuring them in the next video. To enable local controls, go to Edit, Project Settings, Input, and click on the preset selector in the top right of the window. Select the GenVid Tanks input file to apply the input settings for the sample. Before you dive into the GenVid SDK, Let's briefly understand how to play the GenVid Tanks sample. This is a two-player game where the objective is to defeat the other player. You can move player one using the WASD keys and shoot by pressing the spacebar. For player two, you can use the arrow keys to move and press enter to shoot. Now, let's dive into the GenVid Session Manager. This component is responsible for managing the GenVid Session, which initializes and cleans up the GenVid services. The GenVid session needs references to the video, audio, data streaming, events, and commands components. These components are attached to the child game objects of the GenVid session game object. This game object must remain persistent throughout the game so that the game can access the GenVid services. Select the video game object, which is a child of the GenVid session game object. The GenVid video component attached to the video game object takes a reference to a camera component via the video source field. A capture type of texture captures what the assigned camera is rendering without the in-game UI. You can change the reference to the camera component in the video source if you need to display a different camera to your viewers. For a custom viewer experience, it's best to choose the texture capture type and implement your own display in the viewer web stream. If you change the capture type from texture to automatic, then GenVid relies on Windows Native Graphics API to capture the footage and send it to the services to process. An automatic capture type will allow you to capture the UI displayed in Unity, but is limited to whatever the primary camera is that renders your game. Select the audio game object under the video game object in the hierarchy. The GenVid audio component manages how audio is streamed from your game. Setting the audio format to type S16LE sets the audio format to 16-bit, while F32LE sets the audio format to 32-bit. When working in Unity, you want to set the audio mode to Unity which captures audio via the audio listener attached to the main camera. Setting the audio mode to WAS API captures all audio from the desktop, and none means that you won't capture any audio whatsoever. Moving on to the Streams game object, the GenVid Streams allows us to develop and submit custom data to the GenVid services. This component allows us to submit game data streams, annotations, and notifications to the web stream viewers. Game data streams allow you to send supplemental data such as the game state or which camera is used, but can contain any type of data you want. As the frame rate here is set to zero, 
this data will be sent every frame. If you were to set the frame rate to 20, the game would wait 20 frames between sending updates. Because this data is meant to represent the state of the game at a specific time and is sent with the timecode or timestamp data, the web viewer would be able to retrieve the proper game data for each frame between updates. However, not all data represents a specific state of the game, even if it may still belong to a specific time in the game. In the GenVid tank sample, when you defeat an enemy player, the match state changes. When the change is detected, the display is updated to communicate that there is a winner. This type of stream is called an annotation. In this case, the web overlay will not persist the state of the stream. Here, the frame rate is set to 10, as there is no necessity to sync the match date more often than that. Sometimes, however, you need to push data to the viewers immediately, with a lower latency than would be possible with game data or annotations. To do this, the GenVid tank sample sends the loot vote data using a notification stream. These streams do not contain timecode data, and therefore do not have the same synchronization capabilities as the other streams. They do, however, allow for a more responsive web overlay. To support more data streams for your own game, you can resize the number of IDs in the GenVid streams component to add or remove entries. Since you're making an interactive stream, you need some way for viewers to interact with the game from the stream they're watching. Right now, the GenVid tank sample lets viewers cheer for their favorite tank to win by repeatedly clicking the thumbs up icon. To create executable events that viewers can perform, let's look at the events game object's GenVid events component. This setup is similar to the GenVid streams component, and you can adjust how many events viewers can trigger by resizing the array. If you change the number of events that viewers can trigger, you must also edit the events.json file in the GenVid services forward slash config directory. Please see the viewer web stream video and the event filtering documentation for more details. Currently, events are implemented in the GenVid tanks event script and support cheering and loot voting. Each event requires a series of unique IDs so that the event can be triggered from the web stream into your game. These events are flexible as the majority of the values retrieved are numerical values, which can be parsed into your game logic. For more information about event parameters and creating new events, please see the GenVid documentation. To implement cheering in tanks, you retrieve each tank ID and count the number of newly added cheers and add that to the tank. When selecting loot, you retrieve the loot with the most votes and spawn it into the game world. We've covered many of the tools which enable viewers to interact with the stream and for Unity developers to handle those interactions. The GenVid SDK also offers a solution to provide some viewers with additional administrator privileges. Click the Commands Game object and inspect the GenVid Commands component. The setup is similar to that of the previous components, including streams and events. In the GenVid tank sample, admins can power up a particular tank and can restart the game. This is useful if you're hosting a tournament and want to restart a match remotely during the stream. The logic for the tank's game commands live in the GenVid tank's command script and are assigned to the GenVid command's on-command trigger field. For information regarding the web interface, please take a look at the viewer web stream video. Now that you've seen how your Unity project is going to interact with the GenVid services and web stream, in the next video, you will learn how to set up and run the GenVid services for the first time.